Hello, McGrathletes. Welcome back to another episode of me sitting in a dark room talking to my computer. Okay, we're going to wrap up the exponential and logs topic today by looking at a range of HEC questions um, across a variety of difficulties. Okay, we're going to start off with a nice and easy band two question from the 2017 HSC model choice. Which of these four is the derivative of e to the x squared? As always, I've, I definitely recommend you to pause the video and have a go yourself before I go through the solution because then it will be more meaningful and hopefully we will get the same answers. Okay, for this question, we need to leave the e to the x squared as it is. All we're going to do is multiply by the derivative of the exponent. So derivative of x squared is 2x. So if we multiply this by 2x, we get option C, which is 2x e to the x squared. Well done if you said the same thing. Okay, up next, we've got a two mark question from the 2020 HSC. It's a band three question. It's differentiate e to the 2x multiplied by 2x plus one. Okay, for this one, we are differentiating a product of two functions. So we, of course, need to be using the product rule. So we're going to consider the e to the 2x as the first half of the product and the 2x plus 1 as the second half of the product. So for our product rule, if we differentiate e to the 2x, we get 2 e to the 2x because 2 is the derivative of 2x. We're going to leave the green bracketed term as it is for now. We do a plus, we leave the red term alone, so we leave e to the 2x as is, and we differentiate the 2x plus 1, which turns it into a 2. Now we just do a bit of expanding and simplifying. So we get 4x e to the 2x plus 2 e to the 2x plus 2 e to the 2x. We'll combine these two end terms to make it 4 e to the 2x. And there is your two marks. If you want to be a little bit extra, you can go ahead and factorize your answer, but it's not going to get you any extra marks, but it might make you feel um, like a genius. Okay, up next for the 2018 HSC for another band three question for two marks, we are differentiating e to the x divided by x plus 1. Okay, whenever I ask to differentiate a fraction where there are x terms on the top and bottom that we can't simplify, we need to use the quotient rule. So we're going to call the e to the x the top of the fraction. We're going to call the x plus 1 the bottom of the fraction. So using our quotient rule, we're going to do the bottom of the fraction multiplied by the derivative of the top. And the derivative of e to the x is, of course, e to the x. Now we do a minus and we do the top of the fraction multiplied by the derivative of the bottom. Derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. Then on the bottom, we do the bottom of the fraction squared. Okay, so they, that will get you there one mark for applying your quotient rule properly. Now we've just got to slightly tidy up our answer to get full marks. So we're going to have x e to the x uh, plus e to the x if we expand out this bracket. And then we have take away e to the x as well. These two guys cancel off and leave us with a final answer of x e to the power of x all over x plus 1 squared for two marks. Okay, up next we have a question from the 2019 HSC. It's got three parts that range from bands 2 to 4. So the first part's pretty easy, and then the last part is pretty tricky. We have the number of leaves, which is represented by L, on a tree after t days at the start of autumn can be modelled by this exponential function. Okay, first part for one mark. What is the number of leaves on the tree when t equals 31? Okay, so don't overthink this question. All we need to do is take our function and substitute the value of t being 31 using our calculator to get an answer. So we're going to have 200,000 e to the negative 0.14 multiplied by 31. If you feed that through your Casio, you should get something around 2,607. Because this is number of leaves, it makes sense to round to the nearest whole number because you can't have 0.3 of a leaf. Well, not really anyway. Okay, for part two, what is the rate of change of the number of leaves on the tree when t is equal to 31? Okay, when you have a function describing the quantity of something and you want to find the rate of change of that quantity, what we looked at in class is you need to find the derivative of that function. So we're going to differentiate. So we're going to find L dash t, which is the derivative of L. So to differentiate this exponential term, once again, we are going to keep the exponential alone. So we're going to leave it like this. All we need to do is multiply by the derivative of the power. So our power is negative 0.14t. The derivative of that is negative 0.14. That's what we're multiplying by. This question is pretty nicely designed, so we get a nice whole number. We get negative 28,000e to the negative 0.14t as our derivative. 
So this is gonna give us our rate of change if we sub in a uh, value for t. We're gonna substitute value of t equals 31 into this right here. So we're gonna have L dash at 31, changing the t in the power to a 31, gets us an answer of around negative 365. So when your rate is negative, it tells you that the quantity is decreasing. Okay, which makes sense because the number of leaves on a tree in autumn should decrease because they fall off the tree. So negative 365 will get you the two mark full answer, but if you wanna be a little bit more thorough, you can say, well, this means that we are losing 365 leaves per day. That's what that number means right there. 365 per day, negative means decreasing. And for the last part, we want to find the value of t for which there are 100 leaves on the tree. So for this last part, we're gonna set the left-hand side, which is the L for number of leaves. We're gonna set this equal to 100, and we're gonna try and solve the equation for the value of t. So we're setting 200,000 e to the negative 0.14t equal to 100, and we're trying to get t by itself. Okay, so the first thing we'll get rid of is the 200,000. We'll divide both sides by 200,000 to get e to the negative 0.14t equals 100 over 200,000. Now we'll get the uh, the exponent term out of the power of e. The way we do that is we do the opposite of e to the power, which is log base e, and we write that as ln. Okay, now on the left-hand side, the ln and the e are gonna cancel out and leave us with negative 0.14t. And while we're here, we may as well simplify 100 out of 200,000 to be one over 2,000. Okay, so we've got negative 0.14t on the left. So to get t, all we need to do is divide by negative 0.14 on both sides. We'll put this through the calculator and we get our final answer of 54.3 days. Uh, keep in mind that if a question doesn't specifically ask you for a type of rounding, you don't have to round, you can kind of do whatever you want. So anything around 54.3 is gonna get you two marks for this band four question. Okay, on to the next one, we've got a band four multiple choice question from 2019 HSE. Which of the four is equal to log base two of nine over log base two of three? Have a think, uh, let's see which one you would be going for. Okay, there's a couple ways of answering this. There's a smart way and there's the clever way, if that makes sense. So the smart way is to use your logarithm laws and say, well, the top, I can just write this as log base two of three to the power of two because nine is three squared. Now, what can we do with that power of two? Using our blogger rule, we can put it out the front. So just do over there to have two log base two of three over log base two of three because now on top and bottom of your fraction, you have a common term of log base two of three. So we can cancel these guys off and leaves us with an answer of two. So A is your answer. There's another way you could have done it, which doesn't involve as much work. You can just put this straight into your calculator if you know how to use the change of base formula. So if you remember that the way we enter log base two of nine into a calculator is by writing log nine over log two, you can actually chuck this whole thing into your calculator. Okay, change of base, change of base and your calculator will give you the answer, it is equal to two. So you can either use content knowledge or you can use calculator shortcuts. As long as you get the correct answer, I am happy. Okay, for 2017, another band for multiple choice question, which I don't think is that hard, but apparently a fair few people got it wrong. Uh, it is given that ln A equals ln B take away ln C. A, B, and C are all positive. Which statement is true? Also notice how somehow NASA let this weird typo get through where the Ellen and the A are kind of like cuddling, but anyway. All right, so this one, all we need to use is our logarithm property is that when you do um, two logarithms with the same base and they're subtracting, you can combine them together as one term by doing a logarithm division. Okay, so if we have log A equals log B minus log C, the right hand side can be written as log B over C. Okay, we covered this in our log laws video. Now on both sides, we have a logarithm base E, so we can kind of just cancel them off, and we have A equals B over C, which is option B. So I think uh, most people went with option D, because they were kind of tricked into thinking, oh, I know that when you subtract two logarithms, you can divide, but you're dividing the subjects and then canceling off the logarithms. So it is B, but the trick question was a lot of people selected D as their answer, which is why it was a band four question. Okay, and up next we have the 2018 HSC question. We've got four marks covering from band three to band four. We have a population of a country growing exponentially between 1910 and 2010. Population modeled by the equation P equals 92 e to the KT. 
P is population, T is time, K is a constant which we're going to figure out. The population of the country in 1960 was 184 million. Show that the value of K is 0 0.0139, correct to four decimal places. Okay, we haven't done a lot of these questions yet, so if you're not feeling confident just yet, that's all good. Let's run through the first one. So we're going to show that the value of K is 0 0.0139. What this means is there should be some information in our question that we can substitute into our equation that we could then solve for K and get this value, okay? So the information given is that the population of the country in 1960 was 184 million. Okay, so keep in mind, T is how long after 1910. So 1960 is 50 years after 1910. So when T is equal to 50, the population, which is in millions, should be equal to 184, okay? So you're gonna be able to read your question carefully and figure out that, hey, when, when T is equal to 50, so 50 years after 1910, P, which is number of millions in the population, is 184. There is our information we can get from the question. We can sub into our equation and we can solve for K, like this. So we have 92 e to the 50 K, is equal to 184, and we're going to solve this equation for k in a similar fashion to what we just did. So we'll divide both sides by 92, and luckily 184 is two lots of 92, so we get e to the 50k is equal to 2. We'll take ln of both sides, so on the left-hand side we end up with 50k, on the right-hand side we end up with log base 2, oh sorry, ln of 2. Okay, now we just need to divide by 50 and log two divided by 50 works out to be approximately 0 0.0139 as the question asked. So there we go. So you get one mark for subbing the information in the question into your function and then one mark for solving and getting the value of K that was required. Okay, now part two, assuming that this model continues to be valid after 2010, estimate the population of the country in 2020 to the nearest million. Okay, so we have our function now. We have the value of k. We can use this rounded version because the question gave it to us. So you want to try and avoid rounding unless the question says, hey, here's an approximation. You can use this. Cool. All right, so we're trying to find population in 2020. So 2020 is going to be 110 years after 1910. So we're trying to find the population when t is equal to 110. All right, so we've got our function. We've got 92 e to the, we have our value of k and our value of t is going to be 110. Putting this through the Casio gets us an answer of 424.4. But remember, p is in millions. So this is really 424.4 million people. Question asked for nearest million. So we're just going to round it to 424 million people. So for two marks, all you've got to do is use your answer from part i sub in a couple of values and you've got your answer. So not too, not too scary. Okay, uh, almost done now. We are solving a band five equation from the 2019 HSC. It's an exponential logarithmic equation, very scary. We've got e to the power of two log x is equal to x plus one, solve for x. Okay, so a couple of tricks here to make this question much simpler. Uh, first thing we can do is the two in front of the log base e, we can use our reverse blogger rule to put that up into the power of the x. So left hand side, we're going to write as e to the log of x squared. Now the reason we did that is because now we have e to the log of something. And remember that e and log base e are inverse functions. When you do them both, they cancel each other out and the left hand side just turns into x squared. Okay. So by knowing your logarithm properties, you can turn this from an exponential equation into a quadratic equation, which is much easier to solve. So two up in the power, e to the log cancel off, and now we just need to solve this um, quadratic with a slight twist. So we'll bring it all on one side, x squared minus x minus six equals zero. We can factorize by having um, minus three and positive two is gonna add to negative one and it's gonna multiply to minus six. So we have x minus three, x plus two equals zero. So we get two solutions, which are x equals three and x equals minus two. Now a reminder that in the HSC, there are no half marks. If that was your final line of working, you would only be getting one mark. Because like we looked at in our previous video, whenever you are solving an equation where part of your equation is log x, you have to remember that you cannot do a logarithm of a negative number. 
So the x equals three is all good because log three, we can do no worries. However, log of minus two is not possible. So this solution is not gonna be able to substitute into our original problem. So this one is not valid. Okay, so negative values are not valid for log x. So therefore our only solution is x equals three. And that's why this is a band five question because a lot of people were able to solve the equation and get two values, but you've got to keep in the back of your mind, you can't do log of negative. And so the band five students crossed off that answer and just left x equals three. Okay, one last one for today. This is from the 2018 HSC. It's actually from the extension one maths exam, but I think we can handle it. It's not that hard. We've done harder questions on this channel recently. Question is for two marks, solve log base two of five plus log base two of x minus two is equal to three. If you're feeling brave, by all means pause and have a go yourself first. Okay, so the obvious thing we can do here is we can combine the left-hand side because when you have log plus log and the bases match up, you can combine the logarithms by multiplying the subjects. So left-hand side, we can turn into log base two of five multiplied by x minus two. Okay, so we get five x minus 10 inside our logarithm. And now we're going to translate this logarithmic equation into an exponential equation, which we've done about 40 times on this channel. The way we do that is we do two to the power of three is equal to the subject. So two to the three is equal to five x minus 10. And if you get that far, now you've got a very simple equation to solve. Two to the power of three is eight. So we're gonna have five x is equal to 18. And so if you get x equals 18 over five, you just got two marks in an extension math exam from 2018. Okay, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you for watching. Um, if you need any more help with your study for this topic, as always, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys later. Ciao for now.